Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia News 9 and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday the 18th of June. PM Modi visits Varanasi for the first time after four of Indian accused in Panan murder plot pleads not guilty in US court. And Balochistan pleads shadowed by protest against imposed appearances. And now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi released the 17th installment amounting to over 20,000 crore rupees of the PM Kisan State on Tuesday as he arrived in East in Varanasi City. The Indian Prime Minister on assuming office for the third term had signed the file authorizing the release of the 17th installment of PM Kisan Nidhi scheme reflecting commitment towards farmer welfare. In his first visit to his election constituency Varanasi after taking oath, PM Modi also distributed certificates to more than 30,000 self-help groups trained to work as para-extension workers. Later in the day, he also participated in the Ganga Aarti at iconic Dashashwamed Ghat and offered prayers at the Kashi Vishwanath Temple. He is scheduled to embark to Bihar on Wednesday, where he will be inaugurating the newly built campus of Nalanda University. And Indian national Nikhil Gupta, who has been accused for the foil assassination attempt of Khalistani terrorist Gurpatwat Singh Panun, pleaded not guilty to the US criminal charges in a federal court on Monday. The development coincided with US NSA's visit to India for a review of the initiative on critical and emerging technology. Gupta has been accused by the U.S. federal prosecutors for plotting Panun's murder with Indian officials. The discovery of alleged assassination plots in the U.S. and Canada has tested relations with India, seen by Western nations as a counter to China's rising global influence. India has denied involvement in such plots. The Indian government has disassociated itself from the plot against Panun, saying it was against its policy and said it would formally investigate security concerns raised by Washington. New Delhi has long complained about six separatist groups outside India, viewing them as security threats. The groups have kept alive the movement for Khalistan or the demand for an independent Sikh state to be carved out of India. So my view is that uh, they will keep the pot boiling, but uh, the, at the same time, this will not prevent the United States and India from agreeing on major matters, except that, if I may say so, they will make use of this to put further pressure on India on other matters. Authorities on Tuesday ordered an investigation into a train collision that killed at least nine people and injured more than 50 in Darjeeling district of India's West Bengal state. A top railway official said the investigation will involve accounts of eyewitnesses, scrutiny of official documents and statements from railway officials regarding signalling and other mandatory safety issues. The incident occurred on Monday morning after a goods train hit the Kanchenjunga Express travelling to Kolkata, driving three carriages off the passenger train off the rails. Railway officials have said the driver of the freight train, who was among the dead, disregarded a signal leading to the crash. The services of the affected tracks were resumed to normal on Tuesday, with some trains diverted and others running slower than usual. And while celebrating Eid al-Adha with the troops near the LOC, Pakistan's Army Chief General Asim Munir on Monday spewed venom against India and accused it of carrying false propaganda. Munir said India is committing atrocities against people of Jammu and Kashmir, noting that post-election, India has been attempting to mask its activity in the region with false provocations against Pakistan. New Delhi has blamed a bus attack that killed at least nine Hindu pilgrims in Jammu and Kashmir earlier this month on terrorists affiliated to a Pakistani terror outfit. 
This incident was followed by three more incidents in which Indian security forces engaged with attackers, killing three while seven security personnel were injured. India has long claimed that Pakistan has been the epitome of terrorism and has violated peace agreements, which has also been acknowledged by Pakistan's former PM Nawaz Sharif. Moving on, amid Eid celebrations across Pakistan, members of Baloch ethnic minority held massive protests on Monday to voice their concern over rising cases of enforced disappearances in Balochistan. A report. While people across Pakistan celebrated Eid al-Adha on Monday, members of the Baloch ethnic minority held protests to highlight enforced disappearances and other human rights violations by the Pakistani state and its army. In several areas of Balochistan, women and children actively participated in massive rallies and raised slogans to demand justice. Activists said, while people worldwide celebrate Eid at home, scores of Baloch people are bearing pain and suffering, with no details about whereabouts of their loved ones. They highlighted Baloch people are being subjected to torture and harassment just for demanding basic rights of self-determination and right to life and education. Activists have long accused that Pakistan army and spy agencies have been carrying out so-called military operations in the region with an aim to eliminate the Baloch people. Sri Lanka on Tuesday arrested four Indian fishermen belonging to southern Tamil Nadu state for allegedly trespassing into Sri Lankan territory. In a statement, the Sri Lankan Navy said in the VRs of 18 June, the Navy conducted a special operation to chase away Indian trawlers from Sri Lankan waters, during which they spotted Indian fishermen allegedly engaged in illegal fishing off the Delft Island. The apprehended Indian fishermen were later handed over to the Meladi Fisheries Inspector for onward legal proceedings. So far in 2024, 182 Indian fishermen have been arrested by Sri Lankan authorities for allegedly trespassing. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently spray into each other's territory while netting their catch and end up spending years in jails. And the Maya Devi Temple in Lumbini, the birthplace of Lord Buddha, is bustling with tourists once again after witnessing a lull for two years due to the pandemic. Take a look. Tourists are flocking back to the Maya Devi Temple in Lumbini, the birthplace of Lord Buddha, after a two-year hiatus caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This UNESCO World Heritage Site, located in the southern plains of Nepal, is gradually regaining its charm as religious tourism picks up again. During the pandemic, the temple grounds were deserted, but now the site sees around 5,000 visitors daily. An official from the Lumbini Development Trust noted that in the first quarter of this year, about 70,000 Indian tourists visited Lumbini, followed by thousands from Sri Lanka, Thailand, Myanmar and China. During the COVID, there was, you know, uh, very few visitors. Uh, Sometimes it was countable, but currently we have, uh, you know, uh, rapidly increasing the number of the visitors. Uh, when we talk about this, you know, the 2023rd, you know, the visitors, uh, it's about 1.2 million we have. So now we have, uh, you know, the outstanding, uh, you know, the records from the, you know, the Indian visitors, especially we have a quality visitors from India these days. Limboni, बहुत अच्छा लगता है यहाँ भगवान बुद्ध का जन्म हुआ तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लगता है यहाँ माता टेकने को आते वंदन करने को आते नतमस्तक होने को आते कि जहाँ सिद्धार्थ का जन्म हुआ वहाँ आने को हम बहुत अग्रेसी रहते हैं हमारा महाराष्ट्र या इंडिया से पूरे लोग इधर आने को चाहते हैं Lumbini, home to dozens of stupas, is a hub for Buddhist studies. The Maya Devi Temple in the heart of Lumbini houses significant artifacts like the marker stone, the nativity sculpture and structural ruins linked to the birth of Lord Sakyamuni Buddha. Archaeological excavations have shown that these ruins belong to different phases of the temple's construction and restoration over the centuries. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.